Welcome back to The Short Game. This is a show where we talk about short video games, games that respect your time. I'm your host, Reagan Kelly, and I'm joined by Laura Nash. How are you doing, Laura? I'm doing spectacular. And also by Nate Heininger. How are you doing, Nate? I'm doing well. Glad to be here. And this week we're talking about a game that was recommended to us by a couple of folks, um, and that's Expand. Uh, first, I guess we should probably thank the folks that uh, that recommended this game to us. The first was uh, Saima Mishra, right after we did our episode on um, on Assault Android Cactus, which, by the way, if you haven't heard that episode or if you haven't played that game, go back and try Assault Android Cactus. What a phenomenal game. Absolutely. But Saima Mishra was part of the team that, uh, that made that game and uh, was kind enough to give us a recommendation on Twitter, and uh, that recommendation was... Another Australian-made game, Expand, uh, and uh, more recently, we hadn't gotten around to it yet, uh, more recently it was recommended again uh, by multiple-time recommender to the show, uh, Christian Valentin. Uh, thanks again to him for, for recommending the game, and thanks to Saima Mishra uh, for recommending it, and I'm really glad we finally got around to playing it. Absolutely. I, I, I'm bummed we took this long to get to it. Uh, this game was phenomenal. I... Big fan of this game. It's really beautiful and stark and meditative and just for someone with terrible spatial reasoning, I (laughs) should have abandoned this game two seconds in, but it was so good. I kept playing and kept playing. Um, I didn't get as far as you guys did, but I cannot wait to finish it. Yeah, and it's it's not a long game to complete. It I would say it takes about two to three hours, maybe four if you really uh, need to do a lot of restarting. Um, but it's a, uh, <laughs> single stick. Yeah. Puzzle, not puzzle, uh, maze, game cir- in a way. maze yeah. platformer. You're not actually trying to, <laughs> unlike a maze, you're not necessarily picking a path and then backtracking. <laughs> this it's, game's going to be really hard to describe guys. Um, it, it, first off, if you uh, if you have a sec, take a look at the show notes because I'm going to be doing some linking to some uh, images and gifs. Uh, this game is uh, somewhat easier to show than tell, and I think that may be why the game didn't uh, I think immediately find uh, a huge audience. But it's a it's a game that once you get a chance to see it and feel it in motion, uh, you kind of get it. Yeah, you have to you have to you have to feel it. You have to play it. Um, even watching videos of it, uh, it's not going to give you the satisfaction that comes from uh, making it through a difficult part, as well as the calm, almost serenity that comes from the basic movement and music of the game. Uh, this game was definitely difficult in a lot of parts, but I found it almost like meditative. Like I could just kind of zone out and move my cube through these rotating spinning puzzles <laughs> and for a game that is constantly killing you and forcing you to restart i was soothed by it more than i was uh like frustrated by it and it has a nice combo of a th- game which asks you to be a little bit thoughtful and also one where you are trying to escape death at the same time. And there's not a lot of places, you know, there's there's platformers that ask you to um, have extremely quick reflexes and that's all they're testing. This game is kind of asking you to, um, we keep saying meditative and, you know, serene. It's kind of asking you to chill out while also asking you to dodge. Yeah. And I can't really think of other games that, that have that combination. Yeah, it's um, based, I think, mostly on observation, and timing and smooth execution, not like perfect execution, but sort of smooth execution. So we, I feel like we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves. We, I, I kind of at the start um, passed the buck a little bit and said, hey, just go look at the gifts to get a sense of what this game is all about. But I think we probably should, should give- This is a podcast. This is a podcast. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's give it our best shot. And I guess my best shot would be, if you've ever looked through a kaleidoscope and turned it, and seeing things kind of expand uh, the title of the game or contract or move around in a sort of a circular pattern. This is a game where the game levels do that. Every screen of the game is a circular sort of maze field uh, and you're moving between them, but essentially you're, you're trying to navigate these circular mazes while the elements of these circular mazes uh, expand, contract, rotate, move through each other, in ways that, to me, were sort of like a 
very stark black and white kaleidoscope. Yeah, and and red. And also, um, <laughs> yeah, there's... there's the red parts are bad. Don't touch those. There's three colors, red, white. And black, and then I guess kind of a pink for um, for one specific thing. But uh, you know, and the key element to this game that makes it you know really separate itself, besides what we've already said, is that everything is relative to the circle. So in the middle of the screen, at all times, is a little like gray circle, and your cube is always relative to that. So if you are above it, up on your joystick makes you go to the top. But like to the left, you're going to be going out into the left. Like you're you're constantly playing to that circle. So if you're below it, you have to hold down to go away from it. If you're to the right of it, you have to hold right to go away with it. Go away from it. And it plays with that a lot, especially if you're using a keyboard. Um, this game highly recommends that you use a controller. And normally I'm one of the type of people who will be like, whatever, I can do this on my on my mouse and keyboard. I, I'm fine, I'll get through it. It is a world of difference with a actual um, analog stick. The mental gymnastics to make sure you're doing the correct mapping while you're staring at the screen is very difficult on keyboard. I started off almost that impossible. Way. <laughs> uh, I mean, it it felt like I, I do a lot of design work during the day, and it felt like the bad parts of Illustrator, um, <laughs> where I'm trying to wrestle with a UI that does not want to do what I want it to do, and it's very. It's not finicky. That's the funny thing. It's very fluid. It is always your fault. The game is not messed up. It's just that it's very hard to map um, circular controls with left, right, up, down when you're hitting keys. It's a little easier when you're using a circular joystick. Yeah, you're constantly adjusting. Mm -hmm. The longer you play it in one session, the better you get at it. You just kind of fall into the flow um, and it... This kind of cyclical, cylindrical, I guess, um, structure starts making a little bit more sense. Time is a flat circle. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> <laughs> the structure of the game is kind of interesting as well. It's kind of divided up into four chapters, which you can play in any order. Um, and so when you're first when you first come into the game, you have to make your way through some little kind of tutorial areas. Little bits of text will show up on screen, kind of telling you. Things like follow me or be aware, just vague little bits of advice about how to play the game. But once you've got the idea that, okay, we're circling the center, as we circle, we're also sort of moving outward and the uh, and we're you know exploring new areas as the uh, circle expands. But once you finally get past that initial tutorial area, uh, you're in a sort of a central room and there are four branches off of that room, each of which is a kind of... Uh, direction that you can head towards a series of mazes, a series of levels. Um, so you can really kind of play through this game's four key stages in any order, and each of them has a sort of a different theme. So they're all full of lots of different little variations, but they all kind of play on a central theme. Yeah, a couple examples being like uh, Evade, which the main theme from that, I guess you could probably assume, is it's a lot of blocks coming at you that you have to evade. So some of these really, really, you know, you're, you're a, a defined space and sometimes the stuff that you're evading requires you to line your block up with exactly the space of the block. And again, everything is moving in a circular motion, so it's not exactly just like, oh, here comes an open square, let me line up my square. It's like, oh, it's coming at me around the top and I have to kind of judge where it'll be when it comes back around to me and fit through that. So I, I kept thinking of orbiting spaceships when I was playing this level because you had to kind of keep two things from uh, hitting each other while you're also trying to grip the exact right timing. Um, and you really have no control over the other thing. It's just going to keep cycling at its own pace. That's why we keep saying thoughtful um, and timing. You really have to um, kind of take a breath listen to the music, listen, pay attention to the animation changes, um, and try to get all the cues that the game is communicating to you, um, and then go for it. It's very yeah. tricky. Sometimes your best bet is to wait it out, learn the patterns, and go with like one quick strike and, and kind of evade everything, having kind of learn the pattern sometimes your best bet really is to just kind of like go for it and you just have to keep moving don't stop and just weave your way through it and it does a good job of mixing it up 
Um, you don't like I died a lot just being like, okay, I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna go for it. Then like, oh wait, hold on. As soon as I slowed down, took my time and learned the patterns, I could do it in one try. I think the very smartest thing that this game does is that it does have all of these puzzles and levels that are constantly moving and constantly killing you, but it has an incredibly fluid way of sort of letting you try again. It has an interesting sort of a rewind mechanic where um, every time that your square gets squished or touches red, you are you have to restart. It, you know, I want to say die because that's what we say in video games when your character has to start something over, but you're not really dying. This is all too abstract for that. Uh, you don't see any death animation for the square. The square touches something. The motion of the of the rotating kind of stops, slows down, starts running the other way. But it's not even a true, like, rewind. You don't see things play out backwards like you might in Braid. It's actually like an incredibly fluid animation that's, like, resets things and e each time the whole uh sort of play field doesn't just reset exactly where you were when you sort of began this chunk or chapter or or what have you it never runs you back very far and also it slightly shifts things so sometimes the animations might be slightly different or sometimes the rotation of the level might be slightly different every time that you have to try again it just very smoothly, without being frustrating, without kind of playing a you are dead kind of sound effect, it just sort of slowly resets things and lets you try again very smoothly, very fluidly. It never really felt bad to have to try these things again and again for me. Yeah, and it, it it's it's an awesome, nice little animation, and it's quick enough that uh, there might be moments where you have to try a part, at least if you're me, uh, 10 times before you get it. And if it was anything more than this, like, nice two-second animation, then it would become frustrating because I'm dying and have to start over and have to start over and have to start over. But instead, it's like, okay, that's kind of nice, and I get a, a cool little scene, and then I start over, and then I die again in three seconds, and then I do it again, I do it again, and then I make it through. Um, it's very, it's very satisfying and fits the tone of the game because uh, what we haven't even mentioned yet, too, is that... Uh, I guess the best way to describe this is, is that the game feels like it's all done in one one take, one shot. Like there's never any loading screens. Everything is pulling from within itself. So the circle is like rewiping into the next map. You're going into little cubes that that whip around the screen and bring you into the next section. You never break away from l looking at the screen and controlling your cube. Yeah, your your square, your you know player square never really leaves the screen even when you're transitioning from one puzzle to the to the next um not even it, in the menu yeah that's the coolest thing the menu is like like a really interesting extension of the of the game's ideas even into the even into the setting screens the whole thing is like one long shot it made me think that there's got to be someone out there i mean this would be insane um but i would love to see someone attempt like a like a no death run at a game like this and then how since the screens ne everything is constantly moving it would ha it'd be the most like fluid accomplishment in a video game ever i think i think it's impossible though <laughs> i don't know about that it's probably doable if you really practiced but i wouldn't say that this is the kind of game where i like i i have gone back and played a few more levels after having completed the game but i really felt like this was a complete experience for me not the kind mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the sort of person that does speed runs or anything like that but having played through this i was like that was beautiful stunning totally cool um and i'm also pretty much done with it now like i feel like i've gotten out of it what i was going to get out of it um within the sort of two to four hours that i spent with it we won't bother getting into like exactly what happens but it, it has an ending and it feels good you know i i really like how the game kind of wraps up even though it is there's no there's no characters there's no voices there's nothing it's still you, it, it feels good it ends in a in a nice way i think it achieves that almost entirely through its soundtrack like we haven't talked about the music of the game yet and it's probably the thing that i think is the biggest success here uh the, the game is beautifully animated and it has many incredibly clever ideas um, and it has gameplay that I've not seen before. Uh, the whole expanding mechanic is amazing. But the way that they used the soundtrack here is probably the like the cherry on top that made the whole thing. Um, the game has, I'll be including as much of it as I can in the episode because if you download the game on, on itch.io, uh, it comes with a soundtrack, A+. Plus. You know, I hope more games do more of that. I love that. But um, the, the soundtrack 
is really sort of dynamically synced with the game. So it's never just playing the same song or looping a section of a song. The game feels fully orchestrated. And even if you have to constantly restart a level, it finds ways to kind of smoothly remix the soundtrack on the fly so that you still maintain a kind of a build towards something. You always feel like you're making progress and things are building towards a kind of a climax at the end. The only game that I can think of that I've played before that even remotely gave me a similar feeling to this game would be Thomas Was Alone. Mm, I was going to say the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, also one of uh, you know one of my favorite games we've done for the show. Obviously, that game's mechanics are very different, although also cube based. Um, <laughs> the the tone and the music and the way that they work together. Uh, is incredibly satisfying, and I, I felt the same for this game, Expand. Yeah, I think you could have... If he had managed to, like, get the license, this could easily be, like, Thomas 2, Thomas escapes from a pipe. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's still... It's starring a, like, reddish square moving in two-dimensional space. Now, the puzzle solving is entirely different, and there's no true story here, but... It, I was constantly reminded of Thomas Was Alone. Also, Thomas Was Alone did a wonderful job with a soundtrack that sort of builds to what feels mm -hmm. like a surprisingly emotional climax for something that was essentially um, story-free and based entirely, entirely around uh, geometric shapes. I actually still listen to the Thomas Was Alone soundtrack, and I listen to it at work sometimes, and it makes me feel very triumphant sending my boring emails. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... Um... I didn't miss the humor and story of Thomas is alone in this game. Um, it wasn't as if I needed the game is complete without it. Yeah. That's a really good so, point. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, there's no, honestly, I don't think there's uh, really any room for it in the current, like play style of expand. You are almost always moving and, expanding and, and dealing with the situation in front of you, I didn't need it to stop and tell me the next, like the reason why we're here. It's like, I'm fully engaged in this game already from its music and its gameplay that of course I love a good story in a game who doesn't, but it's not always necessary when your mechanics are this good. Mm -hmm. It would be like if journey suddenly, if the guy turned to you and started monologuing, be like, no, I got it. <laughs> We're good guy. No problem. Yeah. You know, what's yeah. funny is that this reminded me of two games. One, obviously Thomas was alone. I completely agree with you. And it really, it really hit that spot for me. Like it, it brought back good memories of that game without feeling in any way like it was imitating it, despite its mm -hmm. similarity in terms of just, I mean, I don't know, rectilinear, this. But um, the, the the other thing that this reminded me of, and it's kind of weird, it's hard for me to maybe explain why, is VVVVVV. And I, mm -hmm. I think it's because it's, it's entirely about um, not exactly physics, but it's about, and it's not, this isn't even a platformer, but it's about changing your perspective with relation to the levels. And VVVVVV was constantly playing with your perspective in that, of course, you could reverse gravity. And sometimes there were even more strange inversions or changes, like the level uh, in VVVVVV where you were sort of falling endlessly through a, a tiny uh, area and having to avoid um, obstacles that would kill you in one hit. Um, this, a lot of these levels felt like that, but somehow managed to take something that was like edge of your seat, nails in the controller, like uh, stressful, and turn it into something that I actually came away from feeling like rejuvenated. <laughs> like it's mm -hmm. it, it was weird in that way. Yeah, I mean, visually it reminded me a lot of um, Super Hexagon. Oh yeah, I didn't even yeah. think of that. Uh, I, for those who haven't played it, it's a iOS game where there's a lot of uh, walls. You're trying to escape walls crushing in, and it has that same. Well, it's hexagons instead of a circle. But again, that game is super stressful. And uh, everything about that escaping, it's, it's, all, it's all about um, 
precision and very quick motion. And this game has those elements too, but as Regan said, it's repackaged. It takes that uh, the terror out of it while making you still have a very high uh, mechanic boundary <laughs> to hit. Yeah, I um, I thought a lot about VVV as well for this. VVV, VVV, sorry, uh, for this. And just kind of going back to the like what genre of this game is, if you had to place it, I kind of said at the beginning, like I do kind of think this game is, the skills are most related to a platformer's skills. And if it wasn't for the circular thing, if we were just moving left to right, and I was doing the same style of puzzle, like movement, I think people would, this would just be almost considered just a, a platformer. But that circular notion and the way everything bleeds together makes it feel like something entirely different. Yeah, if you take out the sort of linearity of a platform, but also you take out jumping and make this entirely just sort of mm-hmm. about navigation. Um, you know, there's you, there's no buttons to hit on the controller. This This is entirely played with one stick and no buttons. And... Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's very hard to file this game under any particular genre. I would say maze game about. I mean, I don't know. Maze game it even feels a little wrong because a maze game seems maze seems to imply kind of like getting lost in the maze. This game doesn't really allow you to get truly lost. It allows you to explore a little bit, but not really. I'd say for the most part, you are very well well aware of where you are and where you need to go. Uh, it's the parts in between is the focus of the game. So if you want to play this game, and you should, because it's it's an incredible short experience. Like, that's what this show is all about, is finding these games that are super short, but really manage to do something completely new over that short runtime and, and not waste your time. This game is two to four-ish hours. It's available on Steam, and it's only $6, by the way. I don't know if we mentioned that at the start. This game is $6 well spent, uh, and it's available on Steam and also on itch.io. I'd recommend buying it there if you uh, if you have an itch account, um, because I believe that version comes with the soundtrack, uh, and it's all DRM free and I, nice, and we like itch. Um, so and you bucks. get a Steam key anyway. So oh, like nice. if you like to keep if you like to keep your games organized in Steam as well, you get a Steam key. So buy it through itch. And presumably the developers get a little more money out of it. They can set their own uh, pricing there. And so thanks again to the folks who recommended the game. Thanks to Saima Mishra uh, for uh, recommending it and also for your incredible work on uh, Assault Android Cactus, which we all dearly loved. And also thanks to Christian uh, for uh, always coming through with rad recommendations. And oh, and I want to say to uh, listeners, please, we, we love getting recommendations from people. We've discovered so many awesome games from exactly like this. Like we wouldn't have played Expand probably if it wasn't for these guys uh, recommending it. So please, if you have an idea for a game, let us know. Yes, please do. And we have a website where you can do just that. Go to www.theshortgame.net where you can find a feedback form. You can also email info at theshortgame.net and let us know what you're playing or what you think is interesting. Um, So before we wrap up, uh, what have you guys been up to this week? Well, I have been playing some games on my iPhone, getting ready for what is our next episode, which will actually be the third time we've done this, the third year, which is wow. crazy, that we've done this, is the Apple Design Awards, uh, the games that one knows. So currently, I have been working my way through the Laura Croft Go game and Chameleon Run, which I've been enjoying both. Yeah, uh, I, I haven't played very much of Lara Croft Go yet. Um, Chameleon Run is brutally hard, but if you like Endless Runners, and I really like Endless Runners, or this isn't even actually an Endless yeah. Runner exactly, it's more of an auto runner with, you know, sort of uh, color switching mechanic, but if you uh, if you like that sort of game, this is one of the best ones. Yeah, in many ways, um, like some of the skills in VVV where you're switching gravity from up to down, in this one, you're switching colors to be able to uh, decide what blocks you can land Yep, on. I always relate it back to uh, Ikaruga, the shooter, for I guess I played it mostly on uh, Dreamcast and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Awesome mechanic that is always welcome for me. Um, and, and so it's it really hard really quickly. Oh, yeah. Chameleon Run after like three levels is like, all right, you get it. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. This game gets hard. And I also really love the other design award winner, uh, which we're going to talk about, which is Inks, uh, which is a very artistic 
kind of pinball practice game. I downloaded it one day when I was extremely stressed out at work, and it calmed me down enormously. So yeah. I will always be very fond of inks um, because of its uh, stress reduction properties. <laughs> it's so pretty. It is really pretty. So we're going to be talking about those all in detail uh, next week. The Apple Design Awards are always a nice opportunity to kind of focus on the state of iOS as a gaming platform. It's one that's pretty important to this show and to us, or to me personally anyway. So uh, we'll be talking about those games and also just the state of the platform as a gaming platform. Thing. Um, so if you have thoughts about iOS gaming, uh, where it's going, where it's coming from, or any of this year's uh, Apple Design Award winners, send us a note on Twitter, and that's at underscore short game, uh, or you can go to our website, as I mentioned earlier, www.theshortgame.net. I'll also give a shout out for a really experimental project on iOS. Um, there's a design exhibition in Italy uh, called Triennale? I don't know. I don't speak Italian. <laughs> I'll put a link in the show notes. N A L E, and they put out an app where they got five indie uh, game designers to do uh, very short game experiences. It's completely free. They're releasing one a week. Um, they're weird. They're playful. The first one's about a ball on a cord. Basically, um, the it says a small interactive story about a cord which hangs down from the top overlooking a handful of delicately arranged objects. So <laughs> that's all they give you. Um, but it's really cool. Um, it's under five minutes. And it is has the best kind of, I have no idea where this game is going next properties that I've seen on the iOS. I really like um, the idea of this as sort of like an app as an interactive art gallery. Like it's essentially, totally free. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an exhibition that you can download and try on your phone. So if that sounds interesting to you, we'll also have a link to that in the show notes. Maybe we'll talk about it in a little more detail uh, next week when we talk about the state of iOS and the Apple Design Awards. Um, my gaming week has been pretty, uh, pretty similar to the last few weeks. I, I am continuing to play through uh, the Suikoden series. Um, in terms of, so I'm, I can handle like one long game at a time. That's what I'm doing with my long games. Uh, Suikoden is pretty fun. Uh, so if you are into PlayStation 1 RPGs and have a PlayStation Vita, uh, you should check it out. Uh, but I won't go into any more detail than that. Uh, Nate, what have you been up to? Um, well, Molly's been playing through the entire Uncharted series. So I, uh, while not playing myself, I've been kind of following along with that. So that's been fun. Uh, I've never played any of them. Those games look pretty sweet. Um, I fired up Super Hot again the other day um, just to kind of get some endless killing. And uh, <laughs> I got a new high score uh, at 41. Felt pretty good about that. Um, really, that's been it playing. Uh, this will be like the third week in a row that would say uh, Leap Day on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, continue to play that. I'm kind of like super into these platformers again right now. I almost fired up VVV, VVV after this conversation. But I, th that's basically it. I've beaten the Forest Temple on my Ocarina replay, so <laughs> slow and steady will eventually save Hyrule. That is that is how we roll with the long games here at the short games, slow and steady. So um, thank you guys for joining me again this week. This has been a, a really this has been a, a good week because I really liked Expand, and thanks again so much to the folks who recommended it. And um, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the short game, uh, Laura Nash. Where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Laura J. Nash. And Nate Heininger, where can people find you? You can also find me on Twitter at Nate STL. And I am Reagan K, R E Y G A N K, on Twitter. And of course, you can find our show on the web at www.theshortgame.net and also on Twitter at underscore shortgame. And thank you so much for joining us again on this episode of The Short Game. <laughs>